Welcome to Talking Entertainment from Rip City with Brandon Laws and Dan Zeal. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, or you can follow us on Twitter at TE from Rip City. Enjoy the episode. Hey everybody, it's Dan uh, coming at you on a solo pod. Uh, Brandon and I are going to try to do some of these more periodically in between our get-togethers. Mostly me because I watch more stuff than Brandon does because he has children and he is smelly. Uh, So today I was going to come at you and talk to you guys about my review of uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, depending on when you guys are listening to this, uh, you might have heard me briefly talk about it on our most recent pod that we recorded yesterday. I'm recording this on uh, Thursday, the day after, uh, to kind of give you a little bit more in-depth um, conversation about it. Uh, so just kind of give you a brief history of um, how I feel about the X-Men movies. Um, I grew up in the 90s uh, as a child, if anybody remembers. Growing up uh, in that time frame, the X-Men cartoons during the 90s was a very um, popular Saturday morning cartoon on Fox. I watched it every Saturday, that and the Spider-Man one, and I was very into the X-Men comics. It got all the X-Men toys, X-Men comics, X-Men video games. I actually just bought a Sega Genesis a couple years ago to get uh, the X-Men 2 Sega Genesis game, which is still amazing to this day. So I, I kind of grew up in that time frame. Wolverine was always my favorite character. My mom loved Gambit, and that's kind of my point of emphasis. And during that the 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 ninety show, um, they hit a lot of the super popular comic book arcs. That of which uh, touched on the Phoenix Saga and and also the Dark Phoenix Saga. So the important thing to to kind of understand going into this is that. In the original comics, the Phoenix Force that is supposed to take over Jean Grey is a cosmic entity that possesses her during this galactic war um, that the X-Men get involved with, and she actually uses that power to kind of help save the galaxy and save the Shi'ar Empire. In the Dark Phoenix Saga, uh, they saw the return of Jean Grey when they thought that she had perished in space. And she was actually tricked by the Hellfire Club um, and was kind of let the, the cosmic power take her over and, and, and do some, some evil. And uh, she ended up sacrificing herself down the road to rid herself of the power, um, which was a very tragic kind of ending. The, you saw Cyclops and, uh, and Wolverine affected the most by it. By gold standards, it's still one of my favorite cartoons and one of the storylines in comics. So it's been kind of disappointing that the, this is the second time now that they've tried to do this. Um, if anybody remembers, um, the last try uh, was uh, probably about 10 years ago, the X-Men The Last Stand, uh, which they kind of introduced it. Um, it was not very popular. It was kind of done in a shitty way. Uh, Simon Kimberg, who was actually the writer-director for this version, was actually uh, a writer on that one and co-producer. He actually helped write and produce most of the current X-Men movies as well. Uh, brilliant guy. Um, I think he meant to do well. And uh, if you watch the beginning of this movie, is that it starts out on a good note. Um, and it actually is very comic book influenced in how she gains the, the Phoenix Force, even though it's more of a fart cloud, which a lot of uh, the, far, the comic book movies seem to do. Like, I don't know why the fucking obsession with a fart cloud it, it is. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. So please stop using fart clouds uh, for cosmic entities. It's ridiculous. And... Your viewers are more intelligent than that. That being said, you know once that story unfolds, it it it, it does take on a very very similar role and does make a, basically all the same mistakes that X Men: The Last Stand does. There's not a really a whole lot of great storytelling involved in it. That being said, it's not a completely unwatchable movie. This movie does have by far some of the best mutant like comic booky scenes that I've I've seen in any of the movies since I mean Days of Future Past really did have some great ones, but um, especially in this movie because Cyclops is kind of an underrated character, especially in the movies because of how popular um, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was. But uh, you get to see Cyclops actually um, 
pretty powerful this one and 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 so it was enjoyable to watch so there was a lot of uh really captivating scenes that made it worthwhile to to kind of enjoy watching so i mean if you're gonna go to a matinee movie i would i would check it out if you're a fan of the x-men movies you're you're not it's it's a good movie it's not great you're not gonna be disappointed that you went it's probably not something you'd want to go see multiple times and you would probably be okay if you never watched it again um, it's kind of a disappointing end to the run of the Fox uh, Marvel X-Men movies. Um, thank God. Uh, let's get this in the hands of people that know what they're doing. Um, I'm ready to to see where the, the MCU takes it. Just overall in general production, marketing. And one thing I was... <laughs> so I went and saw this movie with my wife. And, and spoiler alert, in this movie, um, a certain character dies... And she was like, oh, no. Well, they pretty much gave that away in all the trailers, so it wasn't really that big of a surprise that that certain character died. Uh, I mean, it didn't really make any sense story-wise. It was just that that actress has not been really into these movies since she hit a big uh, as Katniss Everdeen. So um, it, it is what it is. It's no love loss. I mean, really, the, the, the two biggest character or two biggest uh, People in this movie that make it worthwhile going to see is James McAvoy and Michael Fassenbender. And uh, if there was anything to take away from the series carrying on, and if there, anybody were, were to make it into the MCU, I would I would really like to see those two carry on their characters, especially Michael Fassenbender's uh, Magneto. I, I really enjoyed, I have enjoyed it since the this entire run. So that being said, you know. Um, I give it probably three eggplants out of five. So good, not great. Um, it's kind of a disappointing end to the X Men movies, but really holistically, since I was a kid and that first um, first trailer came out uh, where they showed Wolverine's actual claws, the movies have always been kind of hit or miss. You know, I I think the first X Men movie I, I had was actually one that I got on DVD for Christmas one year. So I watched it the other night, and it still holds up really well. It's still a fantastic movie. The second X-Men was really good. X-Men Day, Days of Future Past is still my favorite. And then X-Men First Class are, are fantastic, too. The first Deadpool's great. And then, obviously, Logan is just fantastic. The Wolverine is okay also, uh, as if you don't watch the end of the movie. But, you know, to be honest with you, without that first x-men movie we we really wouldn't be here where we are and and as blessed as we are to have the plethora of comic book movies we have now and and really the successes and the failures are what led to us to have all these these movies that we have now so it's kind of sad that the that it's over but I'm, I'm excited to see where disney and kevin feige takes it you know the the, the rope can only go higher so uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully it helps if you're on the fence of what to go see this weekend. Uh, if you're going to pick between this and another movie, I would definitely recommend going to see Brightburn. Um, that's definitely higher on my list. Um, uh, it definitely was a fun movie. Um, different take on the superhero aspect. So hope you enjoy this pod. Uh, let me know. Hit Reach out to me on Twitter. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. All right. Thanks, Blake.